Okay, guys, at this point, we're pretty much done with everything we wanted to teach you in regards to OpenGL in this OpenGL in-depth VTM series. But... But what we're going to do is throw yet another bonus your way. This is really the big bonus here. We're going to show you how to create your own FBX importer. Up till now, we've shown you how to go about creating polygons in your own custom OpenGL applications right. and how to throw some lights in there and create some shaders and things like that. But what if you wanted to take what we've shown you and really push the envelope, start perhaps developing some sort of 3D game or something? Mm -hmm. Now you want to bring a character in that's got boned slash skinned information with animation on the skeleton right. and things like that. Or more complex lighting scenarios. In other words, use some sort of 3D IDE <laughs> like right. Maya or 3DS Max to lay out your lights, etc. Or create custom geometry easily with a modeler and bring that in. I mean, sure, we showed you the OBJ importer. And the OBJ editor is cool. And it works but, great. But, but it it's doesn't... limited to only like vertices, That's right. normals, UVs. Yeah. And then right after that, it kind of just stops. That's you right. Know, you don't have any other benefits from OBJ. Precisely. If we want animation, if we want to bring in lights, etc., we just cannot do it. Exactly. So what if we wanted to do something like, let me see this right here. Here's a file that we've got with a character. You'll notice there's some lights in the scene, and if we were to just kind of scroll through, our character's just running along, and then he runs up and jumps on an imaginary wall and flips over. Mm -hmm. How would we bring this in with our little OBJ importer? We wouldn't. We wouldn't. We could bring in the model. We could bring in the model. But that's it. There's a bit the of a lighting problem. information, gone. The, the animation, skeleton, gone. gone. The animation on the skeleton, gone. gone. A lot of different things that we're losing out on here, and it would be nice to have all of this yep. in our own application. So what we're going to do is show you how we can create an importer utilizing the FBX format, which is freely available, right. provided by Alias, and take data from, and here's what's so cool, yep. from 3ds Max, Maya. from Maya, from XSI, from Cinema 4D. Just tons and, of applications. Yeah, and, and Almost more, more, every 3D yeah, application. And more and more large applications seem to be adding FBX each year. Right, because it's such a nice globalized format with a great SDK right. that makes it fairly easy to bring it into your own application. That's right. So the beautiful thing is, by the time you get all the way through the videos mm -hmm. in this DVD, in the OpenGL in-depth VTM series, you guys will be able to bring complex stuff created in a 3D application into your own applications. Oh, yeah. That is awesome. So to pull this off again, let's take a look at it one more time. So we get this cool looking character. Zach was kind enough to set up, fully animate it. If I switch over here into a wireframe just to show you that there is indeed a skeleton on with animation as well. Bunch of keyframe information down there. Just as a side note, we took this character over into uh, Motion Builder after mm -hmm. setting up the bones and the skinning scenario in Maya. And then in Motion Builder, we applied all the animation using their rigs, uh, their takes, story, the whole nine yards, right? right? And then we brought that information back over into Maya after baking out all of the information from their complex rig to the joints or mm -hmm. the skeleton, if you will. And now it's just a matter of taking this and coming up here to file, and we're going to export all we'll come over here we're going to export out to an fbx yep. and save it out there right. we go now let's go ahead and jump back over to our little presentation if you will so what are we going to cover so what are we going to talk about well we've got a handful of videos that we're going to put together for you right now we're looking at the introduction just so you have Clearly. an idea <laughs> of what it is we're going to do yep uh, from there we need to show you where to get the fbx sdk Okay, we'll talk about that and then uh, get it. Yep, we and get it. Install we install it. it. And we we'll also have up. to set up the IDE, That's Visual right. Studio, so that we have all the paths, as we did with it recognizes Blue, the include files, the, uh, the library libraries, files, etc. And there are a few things we need to set up with preprocessor definitions, which libraries to include, Precisely. Et so that's all we're going to be covered in that lesson. So then once that's set up, we're really ready to start coding and putting this whole thing together. Oh, yeah. And that brings us to the lesson, Don't Reinvent the Wheel. Kind of a weird title for a lesson. It is, but, but it's so true. Yep. There are a series of utility functions mm -hmm. that we will have to have right. no matter what, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, the bottom, go ahead. Getting, like, basically transformations, global transformations of objects, You're gonna have loading to do it. scenes. You're going to have to do it the same way every You're time. You're going to have to do it the same way. I mean, there's no way around it. There's just one set of orders that you have to do to get it to work with the FBX SDK. So, 
those utility functions have already been written mm -hmm. by Alias, and it's available in the SDK right. in the examples. Right. So we're going to show you exactly where they are. We're going to grab those functions out, or a couple of the files, yep. actually, which contains a hand, just a handful of functions that we're going to need. We're going to walk through the lines and talk about everything that's going on inside that file. So no worries there. You'll mm -hmm. be completely up to speed with what's going on. Once we do that, then we're going to come back over, and we're going to start writing the mesh class. Right. Here's the cool thing. We're not wanting to just bring the data in and then use the FBX's uh, utilities to control everything, nope. and that's the end of it. We want to show you how to bring in mesh information, texture information, and materials, UVs, etc., and take all this information and store it into our own custom format. Right. So then if you guys wanted to write some type of saving routine to save out your own data, uh, if you want to write other routines for working with your own data, etc., you can do that. At that point, we're completely custom, and that's what we want to be able to do here. From there, we're going to move on to the FBX loader part Start writing one. code. Um, even more code. Because, even more code. Yeah, right. we're going to write a lot of code in the mesh class. I, I promise you that. But in the FBX loader part one, this is where we're going to write all of the load code. Right. And where this we start is, loading the FBX, loading the content, etc. Yeah, all because we're not reinventing the wheel and there's things like load scene in place. That doesn't end up getting all of that data into our own nope. custom formats and everything. So this is going to be a massive lesson. Huge. In fact, I'm willing to bet, Joel, that it's going to be over an hour worth of typing. You're you know excited, what? aren't you? I bet you're right. You're excited, aren't you? I'm sweating. You know how much <laughs> typing that's going to be? <laughs> <laughs> From there, what we're going to do is take a look at FBX Loader Part 2. We'll continue with the FBX Loader class, adding in the draw code. Mm-hmm. And in this area, we'll also be borrowing one more utility function that has already been created. Right. That's that does transformations for us. That's right. It's just a whole bunch of transformations that help us with the links, the bones in our joints. There's a lot of different transformations to get the final transformation for each vertex. And they've and already written that function by reinvent the wheel. Exactly. And this function technically gets complex. It does get complex. It's it very complicated. And we're going to walk through each line. We're going to talk about what's going on. You may find yourself needing to watch that video a couple a of times. times. Yeah. Because, again, it is complicated. But we will use that function there so that we can tie everything together. Then we will do our debugging and execution the last. fun part. Just so that we, since there's so much coding that's going to be I'm going on. I'm probably going to make some mistakes. Um, yeah. Just probably so. And because of that, we don't want to have to sit there at the end and start doing a debug bug process right, right after we've got finished typing 30 minutes worth of code out. So we'll move that over into its own video, and we'll do a little uh, execution just to show you that file that you guys saw in Maya running inside our own application. That's right, Okay, very which will cool. be very nice. All right, so basically the loading sequence, just kind of an overview of what of we need to do. the whole process. Right, so we have our FBX XDK. The first thing you need to do to start kind of communicating with the SDK is create an SDK manager. And this is what allows us to create scenes, create mm -hmm. different nodes, create textures, whatever. Um, so we need to create our SDK manager. Once we've got that, we can load our scene from files. So we can say, all right, we have this FBX file. Go ahead and load that. And it's going to take all that information, parse the file, and put it into its own local data structure so that we can start reading it. Again, this right. is just what it's going on behind the scenes. And that's their data that's structure. Their data. Once we're done with reading their data, we want to be able to delete that scene from memory and only use our own data. That's right. Um, at that point, we can then load textures. Um, so we get all the textures that are available in the scene. In this case, we have one texture applied to the character. We load the lights into the scene. And we also need to load the mesh data, vertices, normals, kind of like what we did in the OBJ loader. But the, make, the interesting thing about this one is now we're going to bake the animation as well. So after we have our mesh data, we're going to take all that transformation, the animation data, and bake it onto our vertices and store it in the mesh class that we're going to create. And finally, once we're all done with that, of course, it's in our own data format now. So we can go ahead and delete the SDK manager. We're done. Finished That's with right. it. That's right. And once we're done with that, we can simply, in our loop, draw the scene over and over again with our OBJ, or our FBX. Excuse That's me. right. Well, I'm glad you said OBJ because you're going to find a lot of the code throughout similar. this is similar to mm -hmm. the OBJ importer. So if you guys got very comfortable working with the importer after we taught you that, you're going to find it a lot easier to understand what's going Less on. Less of a transition. Here. Exactly. Okay, links, links, skeletons. Yep, All basically right. we have, in, in some applications, we know these as bones. And That's links right. are the, exactly the same thing. They're basically placed throughout your character, whatever the character may be, and they're animated to get some sort of, you know, deformation. Mm hmm um, and each, for each bone, obviously we have a transformation matrix, as we talked about way, way back in the day. Um, so these transformations, of course, can be 
can be animated. So we have translation, rotation, etc. Then we have our geometry that's bound to it. Mm-hmm. So as these joints are moving, they obviously need to cause the vertices of the geometry to, to deform, deform right. to move, basically. Exactly. But then there's a thing that we introduce called weighting. Yep. And depending on how the weighting is set up is going to determine just exactly how much a vertex is going to move when that joint or link is transformed. Right. And we need to calculate all that information. Exactly. And, that, and that's what we're going to be doing. Exactly. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Nope. That's pretty much the end of it. I do want to talk about a version thing that's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. The SDK that we're going to download is for version 6 yep. and works with Motion Builder version 6. We have found, though, that for some reason the FBX plugin that you can download from Alias's website from Maya in version 6 and 6.5 uh, has some um, transformation has issues. Some transformation issues. Right, when dealing with hierarchies, especially. It, it, well, it, only with hierarchies. Only with hierarchies. Yeah, yeah, you can you can model anything, throw your lights on, throw your textures on, and everything comes in great into our own custom mm-hmm. application. But um, what we did is we just jumped back to version five, and everything supported just fine. Now. Um, you're using if you're using 3ds Max or anything that's supporting out or sending out to Motion Builder uh, 6, you should be in good shape. Right. We're assuming. Yep. Because we haven't tested anything other than Maya, but we've completely worked this out through Maya. And if you've got your hands on version five, which anyone out there that has a, a commercial version of Maya, which is what is needed here. Mm-hmm then you should somewhere lying around have five, I would think. But get your hands on five, and we found that using the plug-in, it works beautifully. Absolutely no problem. But again, with with Maya 6, 6 6.5, it still works great until you bring in a hierarchy of joints that start branching. Right. Then for some reason the, the transformation becomes transformations messed up. get messed up. And this includes even with their sample files. Mm-hmm. If we were to bring anything into their sample files. Yep. So that's just kind of some things we found. This we found may be fixed very soon. It, that's correct. Just keep an eye out on Alias site for an update to their SDK. And if we discover anything new we'll in the keep meantime, you guys posted. we'll be more than happy to keep you guys posted. But we have searched through all of the documentation. Mm-hmm. And we could not find anything. And we couldn't find anything at all that supports uh, a reasoning for the animation to get messed up mm-hmm. once the hierarchy of joints branch. Right. So, again, everything works fine. What you're looking at, the character that we had just a second ago inside of Maya, which I'll just jump back over to Maya real quick, this character was modeled, textured the whole nine yards over in Maya 6.5, and then it was just saved out as an ASCII file, mm-hmm. and we opened up the ASCII file in a text editor, changed the version over to 5.0, opened it up in 5, everything worked fine, the skinning, joints, animation, Everything came over. And then from there, we just do the simple FBX export, like I showed you guys a minute ago, and take out the file. Now, uh, anything you want to talk about in regards to um, the texture as well? I mean, right now, we're only supporting Targa files. Right, so we're supporting Targa like files. And plus, you need to make sure that your uh, location is relative. That's right. So that when it looks for the file, it doesn't look for an absolute direction. That's right. The bottom line is, path, is our FBX file and our target file are mm-hmm. going to be in the same folder. We're going right. to put them in our data structure, yep. our data folder, just like you've seen with all of the other applications right. we've written that have needed to use some sort of texture or data. Yep. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Yep. Um, lots to do. Lots to do. This does get a little bit complicated yes, from does. time to time. We'll so do the put best. on your thinking tubes. Yeah, we'll do the best we can to explain things, but we're not going to break this down into such a way that there's going to be tons of diagrams. And right. Because, again, this could easily turn into 20, 30 hours worth of content to make this easy for a beginner to understand. And, and we're not presenting this for beginners. No. At this point, this is for intermediate to advanced C++ users that have a very comfortable understanding of working with OpenGL, and they're very comfortable with everything they've seen in this particular VTM series all the way up to this point. Right. So, Joel, with that, are you about ready to get the SDK and do a bunch of typing? Oh, yeah. Sweet. All right, guys, let's get started.